All right, here we go, part one of my lips video series. This is the third conic section that we'll study. The first being circles, the second being parabolas, and this is our third. Fourth one, of course, is hyperbolas, which we'll get to next. But an ellipse is basically the cross section that is formed when a plane intersects with a cone and it's sort of at like a diagonal. The plane comes in sort of diagonally. So it's not parallel right here like a circle was. And uh, it's not sort of like wide open like it was for a parabola. And what happens is it creates this oval. And if you were to look at this thing from above, it looks something like that. Or it looks something like this. Right, an ellipse is just an oval. It's sort of a stretched out circle. That's all that is. And again, if you're looking for some animations, I have some really. I have a link to uh, one of the one of the better animations of conic sections in one of my first videos. I think it was in my. I think it was in my parabola video, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, just search the web for you know conic section animations, and you can get a, a really good idea of of what these actually look like. But uh, this is our third conic section and we're ready to begin our study of ellipses. All right, so what is an ellipse? Well, by definition, it's the set of all points in a plane, the sum of whose distances from two distinct fixed points is constant. Kind of confusing, but we're gonna talk an awful lot about these fixed points, we'll call them foci, or f each one is called a focus, the foci is the plural of that. And it's just kind of, a, that's a fancy way of saying that it's, it's an oval, and those two foci basically describe where all the points go. And the equation of an, of an ellipse should remind you a little bit of, uh, you should remind you a little bit of some of the parabola stuff that we've looked at, some of the circle stuff that we looked at especially when you look at the center being h comma k. In this case, we do have a, a lot of other stuff to, to uh, take into account, particularly these, these letters a, b, and c. Uh, let's start with the letter a. The letter a, lowercase a, is half the length of what we call the major axis. Half the length of the major axis. And the major axis is quite simply just the longer of the two axes. And I'll explain what that means in a second. Letter B is half the length of the minor axis, which is the shorter of the two axes. So just a quick little sketch here in an ellipse that is situated like this. This would be your major axis and this would be your minor axis. If the ellipse is situated like this, this would be your major axis and this would be your minor axis. So the major is the longer one, the minor is the shorter one. All right, so let me bring your attention up to here. We have a form of the, uh, the standard form of this ellipse equation when the major axis is horizontal, which would be this formation, then you're gonna use this equation. All right, so you have x minus h, quantity squared, over a squared, little a squared again is half the length of the major axis. So when the a is underneath the x, then your major axis is horizontal. x should lead you to believe, or should trigger you in your mind, horizontal. x is the horizontal coordinate. And b squared is underneath y quantity y minus k squared. All right, if it's the other way around, if the b squared is underneath the x term, 
then your major axis is vertical, which would be the up and down ellipse. All right, but in any event, there's a plus sign in between both of them, and they're all equal one. The foci lie on the major axis. That's always true. And this letter C is the next big letter. C describes the distance that the foci are from the center. And that is extremely important. This relationship between A, B, and C kind of looks a lot like the Pythagorean theorem is definitely something that you're going to have to really really know how to how to use depending on your teacher you might have to memorize that as well all right the more the uh, simpler versions i should say of the of an ellipse formula are right here all right this is when h and k are 0 so it looks a lot like the ones above but just simplified to get rid of the H and the K. All right, let's run through a couple more uh, diagrams here and then we'll get into some examples. So in this case, you're showing both the vertical and horizontal orientations of an ellipse. In the left-hand side, your A is underneath your X, which means your major axis is horizontal. So the major axis is from here to here. That's your major axis. And each of these is A. Again, A represents half the distance, half the length of that major axis. In the up and down direction, this is B, and this is B. B is half the length of the minor axis. Same thing over here, B and B. All right, this is when B is underneath the X term. This is when you're oval or your ellipse is sort of uh, is situated vertically like this and of course your A goes here and goes here all right examples here we go we want to start with example one we're gonna find the standard equation of this ellipse and the first thing that you're gonna notice is that they don't give you the center so our step one must be to locate that center. Step one, find the center. What they give us are the, the coordinates of the foci and the length of the major axis. So, if the major axis has a length of six, the major axis has a length of six, that means that A which is, remember, half of the major axis, A would be 3. So 2A is 6, A is 3. The foci are at 0, 1 and 4, 1. So let's go ahead and put the foci on our graph. 0, 1 and 4, 1. Those are our foci. The major axis has a length of 6, which means that A is 3. So let's find the center first based on those foci. The one thing that you will find out really quickly here is that the center is the midpoint, the middle point in between both foci. So let's find that midpoint using our midpoint formula. So I'm going to take x plus x divided by 2, y plus y divided by 2. This will give us the center of our ellipse. So it's 4 over 2 and it's 2 over 2. So 2 comma 1 is our center and hopefully that kind of makes sense to you right there. Once you have that center and we have our A, then we want to really start thinking about how to take into account the relationship between A, B, 
and C. And in an ellipse, the relationship is C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared. So we already know that A is 3, so let's plug that right in. We don't immediately know C or B, but we should be able to figure out that C, if you remember from our notes, C is the distance, C is the distance from foci to our center. So over here in our graph, the distance from our foci to our center, two units. So lowercase c is 2. So we have 4 is equal to 9 minus b squared. And do some shuffling around. You get b squared is equal to 5. b is equal to the square root of 5. All right. So we've got a is equal to 3, b is root 5, and c is 2. Now those are pretty important because if you think about it in our formula, we really have to kind of use the A and the B and we have to put them in the right spot. So here we go. Let's go to our step three, which is to actually write the equation. And in this case, you can probably see since all the the center and the two foci are lined up left and right that's telling me that my major axis is going to be horizontal so my a term is going to be underneath my x quantity. So I'm just writing the general form of my ellipse when the major axis is horizontal. And let's see, we want to plug some stuff in here. We know the center, that's h comma k. So let's plug that in. We got x minus 2 quantity squared over a squared. a I think we said was 3. So that's 3 squared plus y minus 1 quantity squared over b squared. Well, b squared, that is pretty simple to see. b squared is 5. So I'll put that right here. And that's equal to 1. And just kind of simplify this. 3 squared, I'm going to change that to a 9 and I'm finished. That is the equation of the ellipse. All right, so from this point, it's probably worth graphing. You know, we have the major axis length six, which means, let me zoom in on this graph a little bit here. If the major axis has a length of six, that means it's going to go all the way to from the center to this point is three units and from here to here is three units right think about that the major axis has a length of six and the center sits of course right in between and the other number that we are really uh, interested in is B the B term is is radical 5. So if the B term is radical 5, that tells us half the minor axis. Now this one's a little bit trickier, but if radical 5 is half the minor axis uh, and you plug radical 5 into your calculators, you get something a little bit over 2. So I'm going to go ahead and go up 2 from here a little bit more. This will be 1, 2, and I'm going to go maybe right here. And I'm going to go down 2 and a little bit more. 
and I'm gonna just simply connect all my dots. And there you have it. There's your first ellipse. And you're ready to go. If you needed to actually figure out the uh, the point right there, it would simply be it would simply be the uh, the center, which is two comma one. So your center is two comma one, and you're going up an additional radical five. So that coordinate right there would be two comma one plus radical five. Down here, it would be two comma one minus radical five. This coordinate right here would be negative one comma one. And this would be of course five comma one. So there you go, there's example one. All right, example two, we're gonna sketch the ellipse, which we kinda did in the first one, but we'll get more practice here. First thing you're gonna notice right now is that the ellipse looks drastically different than the one above it. And the biggest difference is that it doesn't end in a one. It doesn't have something equal to one. So when you see that, the first thing that you you have to do is to get that 36 to be a one. And of course, the only way to do that is to divide everything by 36. So here we go. 4 over 36 is, nine, is 1 over 9. Plus y squared over 36 is equal to 1. That looks a little bit more like the ellipse formula that I'm used to. And you can see that in this case, there are no parentheses in the top, which means my vertex not my vertex, my center is at the origin. All right, so my center is at the origin. Let me move this over a little bit. My center is at the origin, zero, zero. Then the, uh, the number underneath here and underneath here are gonna determine the major and minor axis. And the bigger number is always the major axis. So that's a squared, and this is b squared. A represents half the length of the major axis. So if a squared equals 36, a is equal to 6. If b squared equals 9, b is 3. All right, so from there, we have c squared, put it into this relationship, a squared minus b squared. Uh, we don't know C, but we know A is 6 squared minus B squared. So that's 36 minus 9. 36 minus 9, of course, is 25. That's not true. It's uh, 27. Oh, boy. So C is the square root of 27. Now the square root of 27, you can, if you wanted to, you can break that up into root 9 times 3, which is 3 radical 3. Okay, so the C value uh, gives us the distance that the foci are from the center. So if the foci are 3 radical 3 from the center, that means we have to go, in this case, uh, we have to figure out whether we're going up or down. In this case, if the bigger number is underneath the y term, that means our major axis is up and down. Major axis is up and down, because the bigger number is underneath the y, and y tells us up and down. So our foci are going to be on the major axis, which means we're going 3 radical 3 up from the center and 3 radical 3 down from the center. All right, so that's not too difficult because our, cent our center is at the origin. So our first focus, 
our focal point is up square root of 27. Now the square root of 25 is 5, so this is going to be a little bit more than 5. So I'm going all the way up here and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And the square root of 27 is probably around there somewhere. Same thing for the bottom direction. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a little bit more. Cool. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, that works. So those are our focal points. Focal points. And the coordinates, if you're required to write that, the foci are at 0, comma, 3 root 3 and 0, comma, negative 3 root 3. And again, the distance from the focus to the center is our C value. And our C value we just calculated to be root 27, which is 3 root 3. Okay. So, from there, we need to figure out where sort of the endpoints of our major axis are and the endpoints of our minor axis. A is 6, so that's going to be half the length of our major axis. So our major axis is going to stop at 6 in the up and down direction and negative 6 down here for a grand total of 12 units. Major axis is 12 units long. B is the minor axis. I'll put that in maybe green. The minor axis is six units long. It's three plus three, so I'm going three over here and three over here. And all I need to do now is connect the dots. Notice that the ellipse does not go through the foci. The foci are there as sort of guide points for all the points on the ellipse. And if you needed to determine those uh, endpoints, this would of course be 0, 6, 0, negative 6, 3, 0, and negative 3, 0, with our center at 0, 0. Cool. And I think we'll end it there for part one of our study on the ellipse. In our next video, we'll do a couple more examples. We'll do some completing the square examples and uh, continue to uh, try to make some sense of this third conic section. So thanks for watching.